Chaos, Netflix. <laughs> yeah, they putting it right in our face now, Jack. And they're showing you really how you've been worshiping this entity energy in America under the guise of holidays, holy days, and how they flip the script, man. Right in our face, Bo. Good go. Yeah. Hijack City. Blessed Olympia. Mortals, uh, today is a holy day. Mm. Upon which you honor me. Whoa. Do you do that well? Yes. Yes, you do. Because now you call them holidays. <laughs> ho, ho, ho. Coming down the chimney. You do, but you shouldn't. He's a transcendent, unmitigated bastard. But don't worry. There's a plan to bring him down. Uh oh The plan involves three humans and a prophecy. The first human lives here on Earth. In Crete, to be exact. Now, what's this blessed Olympia about? It's something, you know, like today they'll say... Merry Christmas. But back then they'll say, Blessed Olympia. Whoa. Zeus is my homeboy. Wouldn't they have bumper stickers today that'd be like, Jesus, Jesus is my homeboy. <laughs> I can't make this up, man. They putting it right in your face, boom. And who's this Olympia, right? I mean, they got their saints. St. Olympia is around 400 AD. This type of widow, you know, uh, you know, revered the patron saint of widows, suffering, wrong. So you got this Olympia, you know, y'all look it up. What else we got? Oh, 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 oh. We got the statue of Zeus at Olympia. This is why the statue of Zeus at Olympia was included in the seven wonders of the ancient world. Okay. So Olympia is for real, for real. And when they're putting it in your face with Zeus is my homeboy, with holidays or holidays, they're literally putting it in your face, bro, man. You got to be dog sleep not to get this at this point, Jack. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Look at all this, man. Look at all this, man. All this message. Hold on, let me get that. <laughs> Zeus is my homeboy. Again, <laughs> Jesus is my homeboy today, right? Jesus is my homeboy today. Now, what has this got it all to do, you know? I mean, would they rebrand Zeus as Jesus? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Invent the letter J, take it off, it's just e Zeus. Would they rebrand their power? Yeah, I mean, look, man. This is their power, man. Among all the gods of the ancient religion that stood out in the syncretic theology of late antiquity, Dionys, Dionysus became the clear example of a figure of the God, the Son of God. God, the Son of God, a Savior figure who many mediated between both worlds. Oh boy, ain't this something. The God of many functions and invocations will have a final resurgence in late antiquity. At this time, Dionysus undergoes a two-fold transformation. On one hand, Dionysus will be modeled with great emphasis as a God of salvation in the hereafter. <laughs> well, not, come on, man, especially due to his connection with the mysteries and the evident comparison with Christ. What, did, did, did they just add the letter J and rebrand it? And is this why old boy in the beginning said they be worshiping me? <laughs> but they shouldn't, but they do. Did they bring their gods from Europe and rebrand them with the letter J? Who did that? Son of God, son of God. Huh? 
I'm just talking about the Pantheon. Yeah, historians believe that Alexander the Great implied he was a human god by actively using the title son of Amar. So, Amar, see, I, know, I mean, we, <laughs> I heard about correlations before, right? But it's crazy, though, that Amar, <laughs> I mean, that just, that name sounds familiar, you know what I'm saying? When I read Genesis 19, when I read Genesis 19, <laughs> and we talk about uh, verse 30, you know, children of Lot, right? Lot went up to Zohar, dwelt in the mountain, his two daughters, you know, the whole incest thing, and out comes Moab, and out comes Ammon. Yeah, and then in Egypt, you got the Amun Ra. And all this connects back to Zeus. And what does Zeus got to do with Moab in there? I mean, if Zeus is against us, surely Moab would be too in biblical days, right? <laughs> right? Psalms 83. Come, let us cut them off from being a nation because they, they hold crafty converse against your treasure ones. Psalms 83. The treasure ones that are found here, my Nadia, that means they hate, they that hate you, Hawa, have lifted up their head. Who? We gonna call them out by name. We talking Ishmael and them. Edom and them. And Moab, children of Lot, like Amma, right? Like Amma, right? Like Zeus in there, okay? I mean, we're just putting things together with a dragonfly perspective because even uh, Ishmael is mentioned and we know Ishmael been migrating in Indiana, boss. 1785? 1785? That's a real peaceful time. <laughs> For Morocco to get set up, Mecca to get set up, in Indianapolis, during the Little Ice Age, with all these moraines around here, and look at the Fort Wayne. Look at Fort Wayne. Why is Fort Wayne significant in regards to the jurisdiction of Morocco? And what is the Fort Wayne Moraine? Moraine means, my God, what? <laughs> Man, you, you talking about rocks and soil deposited by retreating glaciers, boss? Glaciers in America, boss? Yeah, when Ishmael was migrating in 1785, it was an ice age. These are the glaciation lines. Limit of glaciation. There were glaciers in America when we talk Illinois. Shout out to my Chicago Nagas. We see why they got Nagas going crazy. They set up the holy mountain of harmonics on a Naga. They got the Cuba Ishmael. The Moorish Science Temple already set it up. And look at the date, 1785. Why is that significant? Because the Fort Wayne Treaty. <laughs> 1809, when it was finalized, is when they obtained 29,719,530 acres of Naga land. To the settlers of Illinois and Indiana, boss. And who are these settlers coming in? Uh... The tribe of Ishmael's migrating. <laughs> really? So while we are getting land, 30 million acres of land stolen in the Fort Wayne Treaty, you got Fort Wayne right here on your map? And you're giving it to the migrating Ishmaelites? The same Ishmaelites, my nugget, <laughs> that are confederate against you? They made a covenant against Hawa. They want to cut you off from being a nation. Ishmael, Moab and them, right? Ammon and them. And that's why they're migrating, boss. 
1785 is a real peaceful time for Morocco. Because not only does Morocco get to set up uh, their territory in America, but 1785, 1786, the Treaty of Peace and Friendship that Morocco makes with the newly independent United States. Which Morocco, Morocco, Moab and them, right? Noble Drew Ali did it for Moab and them, the Canaanites, the Ishmaelites. Really? Why are you setting up your land and getting millions of acres of treaty land? Right? I need you to wake up to what really just happened, cause, and you better choose up because there's retribution on the creator's land. You better choose up when 30 million acres is stolen and given to the migrating <laughs> Ishmaelites. Why would you migrate during an ice age? Oh, cause you get free land. 1785, <laughs> that's crazy. Cause in 1786, there's a new treaty in town of peace and friendship. Peace and friendship. Morocco, which one? The American Morocco or the African Morocco? But, oh, this is Africa. To the Moors. This is Africa, bro. <laughs> yeah, you better flip your map and know that in 1785, man, these are the Shikamago Wars, man. Same time right 1785 so you're making treaties of peace with the newly found hijack america not the real america but the invaders you're making treaties with the invaders in 1785 on the headbone of dragon canoe the shikamagra and tecumseh man the last great hebrew priest king he tried to tribe up all the indigenous tribes and we kept fighting man when did you have time to be some slave from africa you was here the whole time fighting these indian cherokee wars man you weren't no damn slave you was a prisoner of war dog and in 1785 1786 they're migrating on the shikamaga who's the shikamaga oh these are the nagas that separated that separated from the greater body of the cherokee because the rest of the Cherokee wanted to make treaties, my naga. <laughs> yeah. They separated from the greater body. The majority of the Cherokee people chose to make peace, treaties of peace, treaties of peace, and friendship. So these Cherokees said, F that, man. We standing on ours, man. Dragging, canoeing them. We fought to the death, man. And after all this fighting, finally, in 1809, they stole 30 million acres of land and gave it to who? We're talking Fort Wayne, right? I said, I said, we're talking Fort Wayne Moraine. We're talking the Fort Wayne Moraine. Yeah, you gave it to the invading Morocco. That's invading a Maxim, right? Aman and them, Ishmael and them, who said, come, we're going to go against the treasure ones. we going to take everything, boss. Cut them off from being a nation so that the name of Israel is no longer in remembrance, boss. So you ganged up on the shit. The Shikamag was on the front line from the very beginning, man. And they broke off from these hijacks that wanted to make the majority of Cherokee that wanted to make treaties of peace with the Americans, boss. That wasn't Tecumseh. That wasn't Dragon Canoe. And now you're rocking with this Jupiter they brought you? Because Jupiter and Zeus are both sky gods and king of the god. <laughs> yeah. Jupiter and Zeus. The Romans regarded Jupiter as an equivalent of Zeus. And Jupiter is the son of Saturn, son of God, right? Son of Saturn, Jupiter. <laughs> and they celebrate Saturnalia just like Christmas on their holy day, right? Roman festivals, Roman God Saturn, 
father of Jupiter, who is <laughs> Jesus, right? Now you got the chrono situation talking about chrono, chronia. I don't care how you slice it. We're talking hijack, celebrating like Mardi Gras. Yeah, man, this was their time, man. This was their liveliest, liveliest festival of the year. Just like Christmas, boss. Yeah, just like Christmas. I'm talking Saturnalia. Just Google Saturnalia and click on images, man. <laughs> See what you come up with, man. When you look at Saturnalia, boss. See the Christmas tree, boss. Do you see the Christmas tree, boss? And they're decking it. They're decking this tree. They cut this tree. They're decking this tree. What does it say in Jeremiah chapter 10, man? Learn not the way of the nations and be not dismayed at the signs of the heavens, for the nations are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vanity, for it is but a tree which one cuts out of the forest. I'm giving you this drop well before Saturnalia, well before Christmas comes around again, man. You want to keep uniting? You want to keep the peace? You want to push the peace? Then you better push the cold, man. Because you can't have peace on your land if you're out of cold. This is what happened to us. Hawa gives you land, the creator gives you land, it says don't be following these customs of these hijacks and we celebrate these holy day holidays and you're still celebrating Zeus and you're still celebrating Jupiter, you're still celebrating E Zeus who's cutting the tree from the forest, hands of the workmen with an ax and they deck it with silver and gold. Fasten it with nails and hammers that it move not. Boss Saturnalia. You take the J off, you got E Zeus. E Zeus, E Sos, Hail Zeus. In Spanish, they say, Hey Zeus. <laughs> yeah. Celtic God worship primarily in ancient God in Britain. I don't care how you slice, it's the same. Deity, man, because this is that, this is that Jesus portrayed cutting branches from trees with his axe. Say it with me, Khan. Body bag for the illusion. Jesus is cutting with an axe, cutting the tree <laughs> with an axe. Yeti, uh, yeti. Yeah, we're just talking E. Zeus, man. <laughs> what, does, what does Jabroni say? And they put it right in your face and this Netflix drop. And I mean, you better pay attention. Man. <laughs> you, do, you better start paying attention, Kyle. Blessed Olympia. Mortals, uh, today is a holy day. Wow. Upon which you honor me. Whoa. Do you do that well? Yes. 